I never get tired of uh, the beauty of the springtime here in the deep south. And every time we look at the creation around us, we have to ask ourselves the question, what's it all doing here? And what's behind this magnificent world? I think it's one of the questions that stirred David when he looked up at night and he saw the stars and he said, when I consider the heavens, the work of your hands, what is man that you are mindful of him? And as we think about creation, the Bible tells us that there's a clue here, there's a secret that helps us understand the character of God as revealed in his creation. In Romans chapter 1, the Apostle Paul says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold down the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them for God has shown it to them. So God's objection to the human race is not that they don't know God, it's that when they know him, they refuse to glorify him as God. They suppress the truth. Verse 20 goes on to say, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, for they are without excuse. Nathan Wood, in a fascinating book called The Secret of the Universe, or The Trinity in the Universe, has explained to us that God has left his signature on everything he's made. And so this universe, uni meaning one, is a complex unity composed of time, space, and matter. That's all there is in the physical universe. And Einstein's theory of relativity explained that you can't have two out of three. These beautiful flowers here are made of matter, they exist in time, and they occupy space. And so time, space, and matter form this amazing cohesive universe that we enjoy. Time is also a trinity. Future, present, past. Space is a trinity. Length, width, and height. And matter is a trinity, energy, motion, and phenomena. So as we look at these trinities within the trinity of the universe, we not only understand that God is three in one, but that God unfolds himself in a particular way. If, for example, we think about space, length, width, and height, we're not saying the length is the width or the width is the height, but all compose space. And without any of them, space would not exist. Someone might say, well, there are two dimensions. I can draw it on a piece of paper, but that's only theoretical. If you ask a builder to build a house for you, you can be sure he's gonna do it in three dimensions, not more and not less. When we calculate space, length times width times height, we have, if you will, the math of God. People say one plus one plus one doesn't equal one. No, one times one times one equals one. And this is the math of God. And so we have this revelation of the character of God. When we think about time, we realize it comes out of the future, meets us in the present, goes into the past. And so when I look up into space and see the stars, I'm actually looking into the past and seeing the stars as they were, not as they are. How can this be? The future, the present, and the past are all part of time. And so the Bible tells us that everything issues from the Father, just like everything issues from the future. But I can't know the future, and I can't know the Father. The only way I know time is in the present, and the only way I know God is in the Son. For the scripture says, no one knows the Father except the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son reveals him. Likewise, I know the present by the past. It's the past that informs me about the present. When I look at these beautiful flowers, I only know it's a pansy because I've met pansies before. And so when we think about this magnificent creation, we realize that God, the Spirit, like the past, informs me about the sun. The past informs me about the present. 
And so God has manifested to us the revelation of himself in time, space, and matter. So as we come to know God through the universe, we learn his power and his Godhead. But if I want to know God personally, I have to meet him in the Son, the Savior, the one who died for our sins at the cross, reveals to us the love of God, and the person of God, and that's how I come to know him in a real way. And I encourage you, as you enjoy the universe, to get to know the God who made it, as revealed in his Son, as manifested through his sacrifice at Calvary. Through his death on the cross, he made it possible by simple faith to appropriate, to receive the gift of God, which is eternal life, and come into a living relationship with him.